Hello, this is my presentation on OT and supervised visitation. My name is Elizabeth Berkeley, um, and this project was completed in partnership with the Family Support Network here in Billings, Montana. So to begin, I'll give you a little outline of what I will be talking about today. So first we'll review the literature. Um, we'll talk about the gap that I established in the literature and the need that came from that. I'll talk about the purpose of my project and the objectives that I developed, um, as well as how my project aligns with the mission and core threads of the Rocky Mountain College OTD program. I'll give a brief project description and a summary of the process. I'll talk about my outcome measure and my data analysis, the results and implications of the data I collected, the sustainability of my project and the lessons that I learned, and the next steps for the project. So to review the literature, there were three pieces I found the most relevant to my project and population, though I reviewed quite a bit of literature. The first being that occupational therapists are uniquely positioned to improve parent-child co-occupations based on their understanding of the impact performance skills have on the individual client and the family's ability to participate in occupations, both at that family level and the community level. The second is that the formation of a secure attachment in childhood is a protective factor. And the third is that internal parental factors, as well as some external factors, can be barriers to bonding. So some of the key limitations of the literature that I reviewed is that there's pretty limited research on the impact of various types of family dysfunction on the outcomes of those children in those families, um, such as addiction, incarceration, abuse and neglect, um, as well as some pretty limited research on the mitigating factors for that dysfunction, um, such as the quality of the parenting, um, the environment, the individual factors of the child, um, and parental resilience. So I found a need to explore the role that occupational therapy can play in providing family-centered services in a community-based setting to increase the well-being and quality of life of the family unit through engagement in occupations. So the purpose of this project was to increase attachment between caregivers and their children um, by creating an individualized occupation-based program which addressed the overall functioning of the family as a unit, um, especially as it related to the healthy development of the children within the family and occupational engagement of the family. Um, the project also helped to facilitate the development of that role of the occupational therapist in those community-based family-centered settings. So the objectives I developed first was that um, I would develop an occupation-based service to meet the needs of the caregiver child dyads that family, the Family Support Network serves by the end of week four. Um, the second tagging onto that um, was that I would then implement that project weeks five through 14. And the third was that I would create, distribute, and review educational materials with the families that FSN serves um, to support healthy relationships and development from week one to week 14. So my project aligned with the core threads in the mission of the RMC OTD program. Um, the mission of the program is to prepare clinicians, educators, researchers, and future leaders in the profession through engaged, experiential, and evidence-based educational opportunities to expand knowledge about the health benefits of occupation. The core thread that my project aligned with was embracing diversity and community engagement. Um, as the project addressed some of the major needs of the individuals in the Billings community by working in partnership with an organization that already specialized in both assessing and responding to those needs. So a brief description of my project, it fell under the focus area of program development. As I mentioned before, I worked in conjunction with the Family Support Network. Um, some of the tasks and activities I completed, I created a literature review, um, also a SWOT analysis and presentation for the organization, an engagement um, survey focused on quality improvement. Um, I also participated in various forms of programming, including supervised visitation. Um, I created a resource for the staff reference. I consulted on playground modifications and I researched establishing the role of an OT at FSN. 
Um, some of the primary occupations and ADLs that I addressed while I was there um, were playing, learning, interacting, and interacting with caregivers and siblings. Um, some of the ADLs I looked at were feeding, hygiene, grooming, and toileting. So just a brief summary of what I accomplished week by week. Weeks one through four, I focused on just acquainting myself with the organization and the staff. I completed new staff trainings to make sure I was up to date on all the policies and procedures of the organization. Um, I worked with my site mentor to develop a plan for my time there, and then I began a literature review at his request. Weeks five through eight, um, I started participating more in the supervised visitation sessions. I was assigned specifically to one case um, of a boy with autism who was also nonverbal, just to give his parents some education and tools on how to work with him um, and to help him develop. I also participated in the Nurturing Parenting and Safe Care Programming. Weeks nine through 14, I started to really focus on developing that resource for the FSN staff. Um, I did this in collaboration with my site mentor, and I also worked on my outcome measure. So my outcome measure was a satisfaction survey, which I provided to the staff at FSN. Um, it looked at the benefit of having me there, as well as um, the perceived benefit of hiring an OT in the future. I had three participants, which is about what I expected as I worked the most consistently with three staff members. I was also supposed to have one parent participant, but I was unable to obtain his results as his case was closed. Um, I also created a resource for staff, which I shared with my site mentor and he approved prior to the end of my project. Um, this was a Google Drive folder of resources of different formats, um, both ones that I created and located for staff. They covered a variety of topics um, such as facilitating transitions, screen time recommendations, um, seating and positioning, safe use of containers, um, playground equipment recommendations, and then a brief sensory processing guide um, and a bunch of other information for staff there to reference easily. Um, and then, so my satisfaction survey, the first question I asked um, was how helpful it was to have the OT student, me, and supervised visits. I asked them to rate this on a scale from zero to 10 and to answer why. Overall, it appears they found it fairly helpful to have me there um, just to deescalate situations um, and to deal with any issues that arose, um, to give insight, and then to also assist in those situations um, in some specialized cases that they weren't maybe well versed in. The second was how beneficial it would be to hire an OT. Um, and it appears that all found it, believe that it would be beneficial to hire an occupational therapist, even more so than having a student present. So the results of my survey um, are pretty inconclusive. I had pretty limited data. Um, so it was hard to draw any conclusions, but overall it appears the staff found it helpful both to have me there as a student and the idea of hiring an OT, um, especially the executive director who is actively advocating for an OT to be hired. Um, he's working with their partner organization, Intermountain Deaconess Children's Services in Helena, who already hires OTs to establish that position. Um, some future opportunities just for OTs to create some family-centered programming in conjunction with those organizations, um, and also possibly for occupational therapists to be more involved in supervised visitation sessions to make those more therapeutic. Um, some sustainable aspects of my project, the site is very open to future students in maintaining an OT presence there. Um, there are plenty of opportunities for continued staff education, as well as providing support and education during those sessions, which would be a great opportunity for future students. Some aspects that weren't as sustainable were mapping onto programming, more specifically some safe care programming that already had a set curriculum as they focus a lot on maintaining the fidelity of those models. So it requires some specialized training. Some of the lessons I learned was that um, some things like funding and policies and procedures can prove to be barriers, um, especially to providing children needed services in those settings as they sometimes focus a little bit more on providing um, provisions to adults and programs for adults. Um, 
it was also important to learn to be flexible and to make do with what we had just because the funding is so limited. Um, and just that it's so important to have an evidence base for anything that you do um, anywhere. So the next steps, just to encourage maintaining that relationship between FSN and the RMC OTD program, um, to advocate and continue advocating for the development of the OT position at Family Support Network, um, as well as on a broader scale to advocate for the establishment of OT services in those community-based settings, especially the family-centered ones. I'd like to give a special thank you to Family Support Network, especially my site mentor, Sean Byrne, as well as to Intermountain Deaconess Children's Services for accommodating me as a student. Here are my references and thank you for listening.